Let's have a look at the national GCSE outcomes for summer 2019. So this year we saw 25 uh, new reformed GCSEs uh, being sat for the first time, generally the smaller subjects, um, meaning that almost every GCSE has now moved over to the new uh, 9 to 1 specs. Now in terms of entries this year overall, uh, the size of the cohort of 16 year olds has actually increased this year by about 1.5% and we've seen total entries uh, increase in line with that. But within that, we have seen some changes to the subject mix, uh, and perhaps unsurprisingly, we've seen an increase in entries to EBAC subjects, which have moved up um, on average by 3.7%. So we've seen languages move up by the same amount, uh, and within that, uh, German entries are down, but Spanish entries have increased again and actually broken the 100,000 mark for the first time this year. We've also seen computer science uh, increase by 7.6% and history go up by 7%. We've also seen art and design entries increase alongside the EBAC as well. In terms of the most notable subjects that have seen a decrease, um, one that I would draw attention to is religious studies, which has dropped by 1.8% this year. Now, one other thing that we can look at is the number of GCSEs taken by each student. Now, it's the first time that the statistics have been published in this way, but it looks as though the increasing focus on Attainment 8 and Progress 8 is probably lowering the average number of GCSEs that each student is taking. So we're seeing that 50% of students are now taking either 8 or 9 GCSEs, and a further 30% are taking either 7 or 10 GCSEs. Only 3% of students are taking 11 and almost none are taking more than 11 GCSEs. What we've seen in terms of outcomes for GCSEs this year is that they've been uh, as expected and largely very stable at a national level. So we've seen 9 to 1 grading work pretty much uh, as we'd expected and hoped that it would. Uh, so we've seen outcomes overall across all GCSE subjects move up a touch but because of the comparable outcomes framework that we use for standard setting, um, seeing very much a stable picture uh, at a national level. So what comparable outcomes does is ensures that results are kept pretty much stable uh, compared to last year so that students aren't disadvantaged by being uh, in the first cohort to sit a reformed GCSE. Now, generally speaking, how that plays out in practice is that we see slightly lower grade boundaries in the first year of a new specification than we did in the legacy specification. And then all things being equal, we'll usually see those grade boundaries increase slightly over time because of something called the sawtooth effect. So what we've seen this year is an average increase of about two and a half percentage points in the raw mark grade boundary at a grade four. Now that's across all subjects that were in their second or third year of being sat this year. And that's the sawtooth effect in action, those grade boundaries increasing slightly over time as teachers and students become more familiar with the new specifications. Now if you want to understand a little bit more about how that works, you can click through to a video on awarding and comparable outcomes that explains in detail how that grading process works. In terms of grade nine, um, always something that uh, teachers and students and parents uh, are very interested in. Um, we've seen grade nine awarded to uh, more uh, entries this year than last year. About 4.5% of all GCSE entries received a grade nine, um, but that's largely due to more subjects now being reformed and so having a grade nine available for the first time. And we saw a total of 837 students achieve a clean sweep of grade nines in their GCSEs. Uh, the last thing to point out about this year's GCSE outcomes are um, about what we call centre level variability. So this is the amount that results within any given school or college change from one year to the next. Now really encouragingly what we've seen this year is that centre level variability at GCSE has actually been slightly lower than in previous years. Now that suggests that schools have generally adapted really well to the reforms and that subjects in their second or third year are bedding in and becoming much more predictable.